Australia has a long history in boxing and has produced some of the greatest fighters the sport has seen, ranging from all weights. There's one name that stands above almost all, that's the Maitland Wonder, Les Darcy. To think that a fighter would leave such an impression before reaching the age of 21, this is where Darcy's story both begins and ends. Turning pro at 15 after a short stint as an amateur, Darcy had standout appeal early on. He was built differently for lack of better terms and looked more physically developed than his peers. The route he chose was his sweet science, riding off the wave of other greats before him. Peter Jackson, Bill Farnan, Young Griffo, and a host of other top caliber Australian fighters. Darcy was born on October 18, 1895 in Stadbroke near Woodville, New South Wales, Australia. A young fighter rarely possesses the power to stop grown men when turning pro as a teenager, but for Darcy, this wasn't an issue at all. By the time he turned 20 years of age, Darcy had already racked up 24 stoppages in 44 contests. This was a result of his size, skill, and tenacity. Overall, Darcy's record is 46 wins, 4 losses with 29 knockouts. This transpired within a 6 year career fighting from 1910 to 1916. His record surely would have been greater had it not been for his untimely death, which we'll touch on later. At 5'6", Darcy was a tank of a young man, stocky and solidly built. This allowed him to be able to hang tough and outpower much older men. Darcy was a boxer puncher who could mix it up on the inside or use his skill from a distance if needed. He was also an instinctive fighter and rarely took any damage in the ring, with some sources reporting him never being hurt or knocked down during his career. Darcy took Australia by storm and started to build a name quickly, with fans realizing he was seemingly destined for greatness. Sometimes the sport chooses the fighter, and Darcy was essentially chosen. Darcy shot up the rankings, and on November 3rd, 1913, Darcy would lose a 20-round decision to Bob Whitelaw in a bid for the Australian welterweight title. It was a valiant effort for Darcy, considering he had just turned 18 six days prior. Darcy knocked out Whitelaw in five rounds three fights later in March of 1914. Darcy also found himself in the ring with Fritz Holland in 1914, twice losing decisions in July and September. Darcy would bounce back with a signature win over Fred Dyer three fights later in December to close out the year. These early and tough career matchups helped to build Darcy into the fighter he would become. This all led to a January 23, 1915 Australian middleweight title match with Hall of Fame middleweight, the Bay Young Globe trotter Jeff Smith. Darcy took the lead on Smith early and looked like he was on track to hand Smith a loss. Smith fouled Darcy, though the referee did not acknowledge the infraction. This led to Darcy's corner man approaching the apron and throwing in a towel in protest, thus resulting in a second round disqualification loss for Darcy. Undeterred, Darcy would face Fritz Holland twice again in 1915, picking up a 20 round points victory on March 13th and forcing a retirement stoppage in the 13th round of their May 1st contest. This led to a highly anticipated May 22nd, 1915 return bout with the Bay Young Globe trotter Jeff Smith for the Australian middleweight title. A packed crowd jammed into Sydney Stadium to see their hometown fighter gain a historic win. Darcy was eager and charged up from the start, setting a furious pace as he pelted Smith with hard blows. Coincidentally, Smith was warned by the referee in the first round for landing repeated low blows. With Darcy upping the ante in the second round, Smith landed another intentional low blow that forced the referee to step in and call the fight, disqualifying Smith in the second round. Les Darcy was the new Australian middleweight champion, a title he would never lose in the ring. There are a number of claimants for the world middleweight title that Stanley Ketchell held, or at the very least had claimed to, before his untimely murder in 1910. Darcy would embark on a run of Australian middleweight title defenses that made his claim as worthy as any. Darcy picked up a 15-round TKO victory over then 98-fight veteran Eddie McGordy on July 31, 1915. The fight was billed as a world middleweight title fight. Darcy continued to fight at an expedited pace in 1915, all while suffering hand injuries. He went 20 rounds to a decision victory with Bill Murray on September 4th, followed by a six-round stoppage victory over rival Fred Dyer on October 9th. By October 23rd, Darcy was in with another former Australian middleweight champion, the Indiana Wasp, Jimmy Clabby. 
Darcy took some of the hardest punches Clabby had to offer, and though he was rocked, never went down or backed up. He essentially outboxed and outpaced the game Clabby over most of the 20 rounds they fought, maintaining his title claim. Darcy would close the historic year with return bout stoppage victories over Bill Murray and Fred Dyer in November and December, respectively. Darcy didn't slow down in 1916. After racking up eight straight victories in the first half of 1916, he would be back in the ring with Jimmy Clabby on November 9, 1916. The bout lacked the flair and excitement of their first matchup, but Darcy comfortably won another 20-round decision. This led to his final bout on November 30th, 1916 against arguably his finest opponent, former world middleweight champion George Chip. Darcy showed his class by defeating Chip in every facet of the contest, even essentially carrying him through the latter portion of the fight en route to a ninth round knockout victory over the former champion. Darcy's status as middleweight champion was at an all-time high, and a world middleweight title shot was seemingly the most logical and undeniable path. This, though, is where the story gets a bit complicated and outright unfortunate. Before we get to that, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you're new here, and we'll be coming with more animated boxing history. Here we introduce conscription. In 1911, the Australian government introduced compulsory naval or military training for all men between the ages of 12 and 60. Men over 18 had to join the citizen military force, which also included some volunteers. Still, men could not be forced to serve overseas. During the First World War in 1914 through 1918, the Australian government attempted to introduce conscription for overseas service. Two referendums were held in 1916 and 1917, but both times the majority of the Australians voted no. If you've been following along, 1916 is when Darcy was at his highest status in the sport, having defeated George Chip and a world middleweight title shot was looming. This just so happened to coincide with World War I and for fear of conscription before he made enough money to take care of his family from a generational perspective, Darcy did not enlist in the military. His passport was denied for him to travel to the U.S. for the world middleweight title shot at some point officially. In a panic, Darcy jumped ship and fled to the United States in search of lucrative fights despite not having official documentation. Prior to this, all of Darcy's fights had taken place in Australia. Darcy left the country four days before the first conscription referendum. Though he was the most popular and loved fighter in Australia at the time, after his failure to enlist in the Australian military, fans quickly turned on him, designating him a coward and traitor. This weighed on Darcy, but his dreams of wealth in the sport were close in front of him. Tragically, Darcy would never have a single fight in the United States. He joined the U.S. Army shortly after arriving in an effort to ease the criticism. One day during training, Darcy collapsed and was found to be suffering from a badly infected tooth. The infection spread to his bloodstream and he died on May 24, 1917, at the age of 21. The view on Darcy shifted upon his body arriving in Australia and his funeral being held. A large contingent of supporters came out in droves to see the inspiring young fighter laid to rest. The Maitland Wonder is now one of the most famous and historic sports figures in the country and his legacy has grown more significant with time given what he was able to accomplish by the age of 21. While Darcy never won the world middleweight title, there's no question he was one of the greatest to compete at the weight and the potential for what he could have accomplished is limitless. Are you familiar with the Boston strong boy John L. Sullivan? Learn how he changed the sport of boxing by watching this video. Thank you.